I always say, members, the brain is not all in one end. You can have great ideas. And if you have great ideas, I am a person that respects ideas. What I do, I give credit. But if you have... If you have a good idea, don't let it go to waste. Give it to me, let me implement it. I thought about using an analogy, but I, let me try it and see if it works. I am the best baby father for ideas. The Prime Minister claims that he is the best baby father for ideas. And I put it to you that that claim cannot be substantiated because the Prime Minister himself has no clue of the DNA mm. of ideas. Mm. Uh, yeah, 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 he doesn't have a cover of the DNA. The, uh, I'm confused by that. The DNA of I, uh, that's what he said, yes. Yeah, yeah, Maya. I am, I, but I'll come back to that. Yes, yes. What are the DNA? The first hurdle of an idea is that you must know what is right. You must know what's desired. If you do not know what is desired, then you cannot compare it with the second hurdle of an idea, what exists. The only way one can come to a conclusion of what is wrong is by comparing what is desired to what exists. So if it is, Senator Bunting, that you believe the appropriate plate of food should have three dumplings, and you have seen the existing plate with four, then there's a problem of too much dumpling. Equally, if you see an existing plate with two, there is a problem of too few dumplings. So the only method of knowing the problem is to prescribe what is right, to analyze what exists, and then to define what is the problem. Yeah, yeah, is 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 now, yes. Huh? No, see too much in there. Now at this time, the solution, which is the final hurdle of an idea. It comes from the first understanding of what exists, what is right, and what is wrong. Because the four plate need to minus one, that's the solution. And the two plate need to add one, that's the solution. So if you haven't gone through those four stages, simply taking the end result is not the essence of an idea. I can put it to you that we have had Two manifestos put forward in 2020. One manifesto put forward by the Jamaica Labour Party and one manifesto put forward by the People's National Party. The manifesto is supposed to tell the country what we intend to implement in the years after the election, meaning in 2020's the election, between 2020 and the next election, these are our commitments. In the budget presentations led by the JLP government, they have placed some ideas for which there was no place in their manifesto. None at all. I wonder where it was. And those ideas were somehow found in the People's National Party's manifesto. Well, look at that. Look at that. One of them, through clear search of the JLP's Manifesto. Clear search is on the line, on the internet. They said that they'll do entertainment zones. There is nowhere to be found 
in the 2020 manifesto. They have now said they're going to implement no guarantor for the student loan. That was not in the JLP's manifesto. They, sorry? There was, yes. Senators on both sides, on both sides. But, but, but and Mr. Senator Crawford, focus. Don't focus on. I am not focused on. Don't on focus them, on. Focus on my children up there. <laughs> well, well, yes. that may serve you better. Yes, yes, yes. Right. I'm talking to them. So, right. but senators on both sides. No, no. Everyone wishes to hear the presentation they know to of Senator Crawford. They know to Google. And not the buzz that is coming from the other members, including. <laughs> Yes. Members on your side, Senator Crawford. So paternity let leave. Us be quiet, please. Paternity leave, not in their manifesto. The electricity assistance not there. was not in their manifesto. And yes. the tools for trade was not in their manifesto. We're still on the appropriation bill because these are being funded in the bill that is before us. I speak first, Mr. President, about the DNA of the entertainment zone. And I can say that I am one of those persons who is the chief defender That's right. of the entertainment industry. I have been a soca warrior, a reggae ambassador, a dancer, a guinea gag, a fashion guru, a drama king. I have been a chief defender of the entertainment industry. But what has been, <laughs> leave me alone, man. What has been proposed by the government to have one venue as a zone is impossible to work for what we hope to gain for the entertainment industry. Right. It is only another example that this is a big man government that only seeks to find solutions for those who are of a wealthy disposition. A simple understanding of economics which you claim, would I will come to that, will tell you that one venue, demand and supply alone, will cause for the price to be out of most people's affordability. But additionally, most entertainment activities do not use a venue. Most entertainment activities are community specific even if it has a venue. So to claim that, oh, we're going to be this great answer to entertainment and put it in Palisados or put it in, in um, Portmore is a misunderstanding of what we left there. The misunderstanding is that we proposed at the time four zones. The first zone, zone A, was a community zone that the community could indicate the days and the places that they were willing to go against the noise abatement instruction. So therefore, a community in Westmoreland could say the play field on a Saturday is the place that we will allow events to go past 12 o'clock or 2 o'clock, and that is the community zone. Another community might say we'll do Friday and Saturday, depending on how much the community wants to participate. And Raytown might say we'll take Wednesdays only. There might be another community like some places up in the New Kingston that say, no day, we don't want no day because our community is against the disturbance in totality. With over 2,000 events per month in Jamaica, registered by the parish councils, not the ones that don't register, it is impossible for entertainment zones to be an answer without the community zones. The second were the B zones where the parking lots, etc., that were within commercial spaces and therefore created less disturbance for the citizenry, like downtown Kingston, for example. So therefore, at the end of the night, you would transform those parking lots into zones, and by extension, persons could book those zones and go into those zones as the B zones. The third zones was for the big events. And those were the Fort Rockies, and those were the Portmore activities. Yes, they, they, they told me they were, had to leave for two. So, 
When you have those zones, with the community zones for regular activities, with the, with the B zones for medium-sized activities, and with the C zones for large activities, that is when the entertainment zone concepts can work and start to make sense. But when you now ignore that, and say you're just going to open two places that make music can go on in Kingston forever. Only one promoter would be able to do that. And this is consistent with how the JLP has functioned. They have functioned in that way because when we had a state of emergency in St. James, it was paused so that some fest could be held. They act that way. Because when we had the COVID lockdown, Risk Cafe had one of the biggest activities that was approved. And so therefore, this whole, not to mention our hotel. So this proposal is not our idea because it lacks the solution that is necessary. It simply took a concept that we had proposed, misimplement and possibly kill the concept. Yeah, yeah. I am concerned because we have already lost one possible zone, which was Seventh Heaven, which when they had an event there, there could be no passing to the airport because of traffic. Yeah. When that zone was identified, it was to be park and ride from out by care yeah. and not people driving all the way down to the venue. So the misimplementation of the idea killed the idea. So when I hear some people say, so what if they do it? Then we are concerned because Jam World was to be a D zone, a party town, a space that had movie theater, dining, that you could go there from Senator Bunting, 10 o'clock, 8 o'clock, and you will just have a full night with entertainment spaces, movie towns, and everything there, a, 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 a party town, and not simply one big venue when we don't have 20 big events for the year. And those big events were never affected by the Noise Abatement Act. The Noise Abatement Act is one of the biggest examples of Jamaica's prejudice because jazz and blues never ever lock off, some fest never ever lock off, thing never ever lock off, no big event, carnival got through the whole night and moved through the whole town. But round robin, night night, birthday party, punch chicken, any small event. So when you put a zone for events that never used to lack of, all you do now is to legitimize the prejudice that you have been working on for a long time. Yeah, yeah. If you don't, yes, I do. I just don't support prejudice. Yeah. I agree that carnival should be able to get its night. What I don't disagree, what I don't agree is that a man now who is competing with carnival in another space can't get his night. Agreed. Agreed. I agree that some fest will get its night. But how would I grow to compete with some fest if some fest have that unfair advantage of going till seven and me like half at two? Right. Right. Then I will never grow to some fest. Right. And so, no, no that bore has right. never been my, 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 my Achilles heel, I, I, I must say. You know, you know where <laughs> you, 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 you so easy to get distracted, views. Senator Crawford? Yes. Focus, man. Focus. No, I'm saying he must watch your YouTube views after. But don't get distracted by the sort of us coming. Okay. I'm bigging up my kids from Queens now watching as well. But the point I'm making to you, therefore. <laughs> the point I'm making to you is that the law as is don't even allow for an entertainment zone. The law as is, don't say that the event may lock off at two. The law says it shall. Yeah, yeah. So until there is a change in that aspect, then there can be no entertainment. Yeah. So when Senator Bunting, the, 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 the people that they put to shadow me on the internet from, from that side, asked why we never did. 
We never did it because we were, we were hamstrung by the wreckage of the economy to the point that we had neither money nor human resource to implement nothing that we wanted to do. Everybody that wrote a law had to be writing IMF laws. Everybody that could be contributing had to be contributing to IMF instructions. It's hard to debate when the concept does not make no sense. Exactly. Yeah. You know, it, it's like yeah. you're, you're, you're talking to your friend and you say, you know, Bounty Killer is a better DJ than Beanie Man. And I'm saying, but Beanie Man, Beanie Man better than Michael Jackson. You're like, what? Huh? <laughs> how you, how you, <laughs> how you reach that sense? <laughs> it just don't make no sense. In 2011 to 2018 to, to, to 2015, most of the human resource for law changes which are not many Senator Webby, were dedicated to IMF activity. I'm facts, speaking facts. to you but as a person who in the was in the, in the government. That when you yeah. went to the drafts person, you were not secondary, you were tertiary, yeah. if it wasn't IMF or security. So that's one resource that was unavailable to fact. change laws. The second aspect was that after the JDX, the NDX, the, all these things, the funds available, the budget will show, yeah. was nowhere near the funds available now. But the concern that I have is not that you are seeking to implement an idea is that you are implementing it in what we knew from conversations at the time was an improbable method to do it correctly yeah. by going one zone at a time. When we did the Palisados sound testing and identified old coal wharf, identified um, um, uh, Fort Rocky and five others, we said we will do Fort Rocky as an example to private investors that it could work. Not that we would do Fort Rocky as a standalone first zone. No. Could you? Yes, I accept. I accept our, 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 our role and our error. And I accept that we will change that error when we get back into government. Because there's no doubt that when it comes to the idea of the Noise Abatement Act, and your oldness is not the father. Not, not the father. When it comes to the idea of the entertainment zone, and your oldness, 99% probability that is not the father. And additionally, we are not signing any adoption papers because he has proven himself to be one of the greatest enemies of entertainment. Blaming them for anything that he has failed about, including crime and criminal activity. And when COVID struck this country, entertainment was the last to be considered by this government. And when they were considered, it was so immaterial that nobody got anything from it. That's right. That's right. You talk, you tell and let us look further at the policies of this government that serve as an albatross around the entertainment neck. State of emergency. Every time a state of emergency is called in a parish, the participants in entertainment suffer. The speaker's time has expired. Yes. <laughs> Mr. President, given that the speaker's time has expired, I move that we give him the additional time to finish in a short, in a short order what he, what he plans to say. <laughs> the question yes. I've been... Been posed those in favor? Aye. Those against the eyes of it. Yes. In the center, Crawford. Every time there's a state of emergency, if you think a lie, ask DJ Ken Kentucky, mm -hmm. down in St. James, mm -hmm. who can't get to keep nothing because everything lock off at 11 and 12. Mm -hmm. Every time a state of emergency sneak up on us, all who did invest in promotion and advertising for them event three months ago, there is no grandfathering. 
it lack off them, lose them money. There is nobody where some could consider giving them back a contribution. It is just dead and gone. Every time that there is a state of emergency, three, four, five months, all the round robin, all who show them round robin, which is like a partner, nobody get back that, they're just dead. So people know that this is just a political ploy, trying to change the narrative, but not trying to change the nation. And if they were trying to change the nation, they would have engaged those who were at the forefront of planning this out. In the middle of the night, testing sound. They were out there, myself, being scientific about it. To say, yo, okay, let's have a giant parliamentary group then. For say, how entertainment should be treated and how the Nice Abatement Act should be reviewed. If you're serious about it. But they're not serious about it. The second is paternity leave. And again, when we considered paternity leave, it was on the basis that some reports suggest, Senator Webby, that the Jamaica single parent experience is 47%. The world average is 8%. The United States said they had a crisis with 23%. We have 47% single parent experience. And when you have that single parent experience, the child don't only lose the support of one. He loses the support, they say, of up to 15 to 30 people. Simply the family of the father alone can come to 10. I have, what, 11 uncle and auntie on my mother's side. I'm 54 cousins. <laughs> my mother's side alone. Then I add my friend them from the illustrious champs winning Kingston College. And uh, <laughs> you're wondering where the channel was coming. And then I had the Senate and the People's National Party. And then I had my colleagues because I can tell you, my daughter, Matthew, have to do something if something needs to be done. <laughs> that is the circumstances that a child that would have not had me would have long lost. They say from the research that a child who is in a single parent experience is likely to be more inclined to be in poverty, more likely to have physical, mental, and behavioral health problems, disrupted brain development, shortened educational trajectories, contact with child welfare and justice system, and employment challenges in adulthood. They say children from these families are also more likely to have poor life outcomes, low income um, um, survival ability, live in less safe communities, limited access to quality health care, and, and, and limited access to comprehensive support and enrichment activities. When we recognize this disparity of women-led households, single parent experience and the contribution to our, our negative circumstances. We said we should try making a bond between the father and the child from early by putting in paternity leave. That was why we proposed paternity leave. We also considered gender equity and recognized that if we have 80% small businesses, then some people will see a young female as a higher risk hire due to the cost of maternity leave. And so if we removed that differentiation, then a young female is no longer a higher risk hire. In fact, it changes the reality where a young male is now a higher risk hire because every week he can need paternity leave. But when you have four people working for you, and to get pregnant, you then have to find salaries for that three months, two months. And so, no, no. Some of these things, we have to just reason them out. If you have an 80% small business, yeah, man, but just reason it out. You have 80% small business occurrence. The small business have three, four people. The person who is in a business is concerned about cost and risk. The biggest concern. 
He therefore then says to himself, how am I going to hire? Each time that he has to replace someone, it becomes an issue. So we put those maternity, paternity leave proposals for those reasons. What instead have the JLP done? They have put paternity leave not as a social intervention, but as a compensation sweetener for 10% of the population, which is just government workers. They have not considered 47% single parent experience. They have not considered the likelihood for poverty, school dropout, um, criminal intervention from the single parent experience. They have considered 10% to say we are making a, a salary review and this is a sweetener. So when they say, why are we concerned if they're implementing our ideas? They're not implementing our ideas as it should be implemented. So when it comes to the idea of paternity leave. Let's see what this says. Let's see what this says. And Joe, unless it's not the father. It's not the father. 99% certainty. Not the father. And it was in their manifesto. Matthew write the manifesto. No, we don't do that, you know, because a player cannot give another player a red card unless the game is, 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 is rigged. Right? So I don't see how one player Can come to give other player a red card. And the referees decided that a red card is coming for that side. Right? Full red card. The only person I'm sorry for over here, she will be at the um, TMP conference. <laughs> we'll unveil it. So I call it the unveil. Yes, we in conversations. <laughs> Matthew said no already. We come now to the other concept. <laughs> you see you? Of electricity. We proposed in our manifesto that the only way we could legitimately assist those in need was through paying for a utility. And that is when a children, let me say again, can we believe after a while? <laughs> yeah, I hear you. When we proposed electricity, we recognized that it was impossible to give everybody a check in and of themselves. We also recognized that households had multiple persons, like multiple families in one household. No people out there with a tenement yard, but even a regular single house. Sometimes two children grow up and just stay in the house with their own families. And so we recommend to much critique that we should subsidize the utility bills, water and light, as a method of mitigating against the struggles that the people were facing. Let us not forget 2021 when the Minister of Finance was saying inflation is low. I came here to say, listen, look at the difference between inflation in general and food inflation. I highlighted that food inflation was far outpacing the general inflation and there are many within the society who only afford food. Some of the other contributors to the basket were not of their concern. And so, it's because it is, it is, it is, it is, it is, it is high quality. It's high quality. You have to pay. You have to pay for the high quality. <laughs> We're gonna come up with another one for the, for the, for the, for the others. But yeah, it's now almost two thousand dollars. That soon come to go. So when we said the electricity. I was asked in an interview, how long? We said, as long as it is necessary. This government, Senator Bunting, gave four months of assistance. Oh, four months. And even though the circumstances have deteriorated, mm -hmm. they have not carried it back. Yeah. Instead, they come with a subsidy for bus fare. And though the, 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 the BOJ said that the bus fare subsidy had no impact on alleviating the inflation negatives. 
The prime minister came to this house and said that they have done bus fare to do just that. This is after. And asked if they can trust us. There was no way. Well, they said the governor, they claim, said that he misled them. That he made a mistake. And that is, yes, the governor said. Mama, but yeah, yeah, poor Miss Curtis. But the, if the governor said that two weeks ago, why would the prime minister repeat it now? When the governor said it never works, so who tell him this time? To come back to say, we have, that is why we have done that. When it failed. Why the minister of finance still saying it? When it has been proven not to work. It has been proven not to work. The other reality that exists out there is that I was so excited when I saw them say they will give electricity subsidies to those who have retired pension. And they will do it through um, solar. But you have to own your house. Now, if you understand how house ownership normally goes. Your mortgage ends at the point of retirement. So you have saved the cost of the mortgage. The man who is renting, however, his rent don't end at the point of retirement. So if there's anybody that needs some reprieve, is the one who don't own the house. Why not then, if he can't get no solar, give him the same electricity reprieve that you stole <laughs> and you can't say we can't say stole because the prime minister said stole lie um mislead a million times and so therefore when we checked that situation as it relates to the idea of using <laughs> Listen, I'm, you need to be yourself over there. Right? Right? I'm <laughs> and I never see him in the stadium. Either. He was hiding. Oh, my God, you're in you're, oh, you're in a royal box. But, and I must congratulate you, Senator Webby, on an, on, on an excellent um, partnership. And, and um, I mean, the, the students benefited greatly. And Grace Kennedy must be congratulated. And your people were very committed. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we, we only get clapped when we say you do something good. Not the wrong, not the wrong, not the wrong, not the wrong, not the wrong. Not the wrong. So, you have the results for the. Yes, the results are in. For the electricity? Yes. Electricity. When it comes to the idea of a electricity subsidy, yes, we can't won't believe. Ninety-nine percent surety. Andrew Holness and the GLP is not the father. And you are not up for adoption either, because that side has never understood the plight of the people. That side has never differentiated needs different from what they're trying to do for, for, for a narrative. Yeah. They're not trying to build a nation. Yeah. They're trying to build a narrative. They say, oh, come on, so we got a student loan. Come on. <laughs> In their manifesto, there was no, because the point is being made, there is no mention, no mention of removing the guarantor. They are so <laughs> bereft of ideas <laughs> that their bare face said, once upon a time, Bruce Golden said it in a speech that he was going to consider. So Bruce never said the manifesto, but put it in there. And they came now to claim that the PMP has no ideas but they will put in removing the guarantor. I congratulate you on that. And I am grateful 
for that. But the young gentleman who the minister carried to the parliament and stated that he left school in 2019, had they listened to us in 2020, he would be graduating now, he would not be starting now. And that is the importance of putting those with ideas in power. Because when they get licking the election and need to change the narrative, that is when. That is when. That is when. That is when all of a sudden we're going to roll out. Um, every academic is angered when there is plagiarism of ideas. Every single one. Without any, no, and with lambasting. <laughs> with, <laughs> with lambasting. But let me, let me give you some statistics. You know, you won't understand the importance of an idea. But I've seen good ideas killed by bad implementation. But I've never seen a bad idea saved by good implementation. Therefore, the idea is of very importance. But let me tell you why we don't think you've gone far enough with the student loan. A 2022 research in Jamaica on tertiary student hunger in Jamaica. Tertiary student hunger in Jamaica. This is a published document. The result says, the study found that most of the students, 38.8%, suffered from severe hunger followed by moderate hunger at 29.3 no at 33% and the lowest portion 29.3% with mild hunger more than 70% of students worried each month about not having enough food while 33% of the students sometimes do not eat for an entire day their physical and emotional readiness to study was compromised as 40% said hunger affected their academic work via a variety of reasons, such as headaches, poor concentration, and missed classes. The low achieving student experienced the most hunger. This is a in the, in the World Journal of Advanced Research and Reviews 2022 document. So when you simply say you don't need a guarantor, mm -hmm. that is one hurdle that we wanted to cross. Yeah. But we also knew that there were greater expenses, including boarding, mm -hmm. including eating, mm -hmm. including books. We also knew that we had women and young girls being abused for food. And that is why we said one degree per household that anybody who is the first to, 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 to get into a university, that they should receive a scholarship. Yes. Simply now saying you remove the guarantor and say we put in your idea. You have no, to, to, you, you go and buy the egg and say a cake makes. There is no cake. You know what I love about the JLP? They say big numbers, as if we don't know mathematics. <laughs> There's a $200 million, and then 200 million people, so therefore we only have $1 per person. They don't, they don't, they don't do the maths about it. That's just anecdotal, so we can give you $1. All right, so how much you want me to use? 200 people have $1 million per person. 2,000 people have 100,000. You have 20,000 people, then that means they have 10,000. And you more than likely have 20,000 people. So your 10,000 now is going to change the result. Yeah, yeah, they have these numbers. <laughs> right, right? So, so, how many students we have? The university have 16,000 of the West Indies. Right? And it don't tell us a 70% experience hunger. So that is already 10,000. I'm not going to take it. I'm not going to case it. I'm not going to teach us college yet. What are you saying? What are you saying? 200 million when time you have 100,000. Right? How much have they paid in men since last year? Sorry?
the government focus on immateriality. I come into that. So, then, yeah, man, but there's a lot to say. Yes. We come further to the. To, for, for the. For the what? No, no, no. We're not getting the news yet. We come now to the whole concept of the goats. That one light dear to my heart because I've never been so embarrassed. There's a goat man. Miss and May, the newspaper said Crawford Corrid. <laughs> <laughs> it's sweet, yeah. <laughs> but the concept of the goat wasn't residing goats. It was. <laughs> he said he Corrid. Yes, but we've been bald for two days. But I say. But the problem we have is that I observed in our society that there was a limited understanding of ownership. I observed the Chinese Jamaicans who ensured that their children understood commerce at an early age. And the whole giving a seventh grader a goat was to show that ownership could lead to, to wealth. That, that investment in time and effort. It wasn't, yeah. kind of gimmick. it wasn't a gimmick of simply a goat. The goat come about because it's the cheapest thing to feed. Yeah. You have never seen me running around and say, me want to give a fowl because I've lost money for an egg. But I know that when you're broke, goat can eat grass. That's right. And Portland was a place of grass. Mm -hmm. The next thing they're going to call me is a tree man because I want to give... Every one grade a tree and he sell yaki yeah. and he sell the mango because if you don't train our people in the concept of commerce, how are we going to grow when we are mainly consumers? Yes. Every Christmas, yeah. we wonder what we are going to buy, yeah. and then uh, uh, our foreign people, I wonder what they're going to sell. It was to create that concept, yes, and the five thousand dollar to come and they have to be them friend so that they can give you um, a food package. It's one of the things that hurt me the most. Like, why should you decide what a person eats? Only pet. Only a pet. Another man should decide what he eats. Oh yes, two corned beef and three sardines and two pounds of rice. So when we came with that idea, it wasn't only about farming. It was about owning. The JLP then now advertised in the newspaper that we have imported how many goats? Three quarters is mine. How many have to pay out the taxes? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but the fact of the matter is that when they came to say we don't want a goat, it was a slap in the face yes, yes. of the concept. Yeah. Okay. Not because we were in competition. When they said that they would prefer a laptop as if goat farming cannot have a laptop. And then the final, it hurt me. It irks and it hurts. The final one is the tool for trade. The tool for trade, the most recent one that was not in the JP manifesto, but in the PMP manifesto. And then announced by the prime minister as if he's this brilliant um, philosopher, baby father, tool for trade. 99% sure, not the father. But the tool for trade was joined with the trust loans. Because in addition to giving them access to them level, and access to them showing so they could work for a man. We said we wanted a system that he started with a loan of 200,000. And if he paid that, it moved to 400,000. And if he paid that, so that eventually he could become an entrepreneur. Seeking his own contracts, yes. not simply working for a man. That's right. So when we looked into it, we wanted to ensure that he could develop 
and employ others. Build an enterprise. And that is why I am concerned about the implementation of the things we propose because they have been taken without the first three hurdles. They don't define what is right. They don't define what exists. They simply come with an effort to gain public attention and change the narrative instead of changing the nation. <laughs> hey, Jamaica, the only country where can deport me, you know, so anytime it won't good me, glad enough. But let me show you how they want to change the narrative. And my friend is sitting over there, but me have a talk about lift. There's a project called Lift. The Prime Minister reports that it is really targeting 17 to 25. I can be corrected if I'm wrong. In the age cohort, 17 to 25 is 300,000 persons, approximately. 35,000 a year. So, sorry, approximately 300,000. The Prime Minister says they are currently satisfying 506 persons. Senator Bunting, it would take 600 years. For them to satisfy the 300,000 in the cohort. But maybe not all of them will want to do it 50%. It will take 300 years. 25% take 150 years. So when you come and say, oh, we have this program and it's gone. You just make the youth them start to look bad. People start to say, oh, you're still there, so you're worthless. Because the, the most it can go is 500 at a time. That's what the budget has indicated. And how do you choose 500 from 300,000? Even the MPs are running away from it because they're getting quadruple, quintuple, 50 times the, 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 the request. Is it a good concept? Of course. But it's an immaterial in implementation. It needs a budget 10 times what is there. But you want to say you do something. It reminds me of this back to school team and give people two thousand dollar for your thirty thousand dollar booklets. But in Kansas, they never do nothing for you. This needs to be expanded. But it's if you're not changing the nation, you're changing the narrative. And so therefore they come with that. I go again to heart, where the Prime Minister says that since they have made heart free, a hundred and twenty thousand people has enrolled. Now when you hear that, Senator Bins. I got excited because if since he had made it free last year, 120,000 people enrolled, that must be in addition to when it was not free. I then read the reports. The 120 is the total that went to heart that year. It was only 17,000 more than the year when it wasn't free. And every single year, heart has increased in 2019, 23,000 more than 2018. In 2020, 20,000 more than 2019. In 2021, COVID, it went down by 39,000. In 2022, 10,000 more. And in 2023, 17,000 more. It was nothing novel. The best statement he could make is since we made it free, 17,000 more. Yeah. That would be the truth. He said since he had made it free, 120,000 more. She said, the senator said, that you're not telling the truth? That it, well, you see, sometimes she don't believe that they are what they are. Because um, she's not really used to them like that sometimes. Um, so so I, will, I will look at the prime minister's presentation Read it. And, and find the area for... <laughs> I, no problem, no problem. I, I like to learn. You know. And I can never say the JLP is doing nothing, but you don't have to get zero to fail. <laughs> you just don't do enough. So, huh? I'm going to find that. No, no problem, no problem. But I will find, I'll find it soon and, and, and come to you, dear. So when the Prime Minister says that, since he, it, it has um, been done, we are at this particular level. 
it is something that one has to consider and it is unfortunate that it was done in, in that way. But additionally, the Prime Minister goes on to say that there is a need for 26,000 spaces for young men who are desirous of a job and can't get a job. And in response to that, the Prime Minister says that he is going to do a program of seeking to attract those young persons. That program is to target 30,000 person, 30 persons from 60 constituencies. So the Prime Minister says that there is a need for 1,600, uh, I mean 26,000 persons. And this total target is 1,890. The total target, Senator Bunting, is 7% of what he says we need. Remember, every year another cohort is coming in. The cohort coming in of almost 2,300 is more than their training. Now, if you're training 1,890, is this only for one year? Because the proper intent must be to carry them to full skill. Two year, three year, four year. So if it is two year, three year, four year, then this is a drop in the bucket. But it is being announced in a grand form to make the rest of us look at the other 22,000 and say, why you haven't taken up this initiative? When the only thing an MP can get from South Manchester is 30. Don't worry about that. The only thing an MP can get, I would say central, but 30 can't see of central. You know. <laughs> That four love. Hot, hot. No, it, it, yeah. Hot. As, as a Crawford, we don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> but can you look into the reality and realize that they aren't seeking to change a nation? They are seeking to change a narrative that if you don't look at the numbers, you then say the youth are worthless. Why them don't take up the 500 spaces out of 300,000? for lift, why they don't take up the 1,000 spaces or the 26,000 for the whatever he calls that. And then, <laughs> boy, I'm a local soldier, them down there, give you a 3,000 margin. There was one seat in Northwest St. Catherine, we call the candidate from the JLP, we call him Cash Pot. <laughs> He got nothing focus, over 36. Focus, Senator, Senator Crawford. Focus, man. Focus. I am focused. Focus. Cash part is in the budget. Focus, Senator Crawford. Talk about focus. Now, don't forget that the Minister of Finance came here boasting that they have received much more revenue from gambling. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What type of society are we building? And I don't even hear the church come in. Hmm. The sin taxes should be used to change the sin. Right. Not to be used as a, as a buttress. Right. And okay. any principal will tell you gambling is a problem in schools it now. Is. It is a real problem. Major problem. A real problem. Symbol of hopelessness. So the last one I'd like to speak to about simply changing the narrative instead of the nation is the much trumpeted housing program. Yeah. The housing program, social housing program. The Prime Minister himself likes to collate the eight years and say we have built 213 so far. Over eight years, they have averaged 25 per year. In the budget, coming from the TF, it is said, it looks like they're going to about 30 this year. The Prime Minister himself, Senator Gale, said we need 6,000 of these social houses. At 25 per year, it will take 240 years. The only thing that hope comes into that is you hope the next man not here. Mm -hmm. But there is no way that this can be a legitimate proposal as a program. Yeah. And to be comparing it to Operation Pride that gave thousands access. Yeah. To compare it to Portmore that gave thousands access. Yeah. 
to compare it to NHT that gave thousands access and land lease that gave thousands access. 25 per year. So when I hear them over that side say that they care, I cringe. Because if this is care, I don't want to see what uncare is. The facts that face us is that this budget was a effort to change a narrative after the backsliding they received on the 26th of February. But the people will recognize and realize that what is here cannot change their lives. And the only red card that will be given is whenever this government chooses to call a general election. Thank you, Mr. President.